Rob J gave me an incredibly generous one year's worth of subscriptions on Patreon and brings you today's video. Oh, her Caslim versus Will Scion of Peace, Yeva, and Nahiri. Mono well, green deck means we don't have to fix our colours. That is looking pretty good, so yeah, we'll try it. Well, some decent turn one plays from our opponents, an Elvish Mystic and a Sol Ring. We draw into Virtue of Strength, so return a creature or land from graveyard to hand in the early game. Obviously not going to be making use of that. Nyeva continuing to go quickly, that is a Gaius Cradle into the Lanoir Tribe. So, four mana on the creatures alone next turn. Idyllic Tutor for Will searches up an enchantment. And, yep, it's more ramp in the form of Smothering Tithe. Alright, that is a means of abusing our trigger on the commander, but we're nowhere near that at the moment. Just have to attempt to try and keep up with our opponents on mana. A nature's law will get us a land. A braid goes over to the Sol Ring. So we're going to see Smothering Tithe in a few turns time as opposed to next turn, I imagine. Still have an elf player to deal with though. Norwood Priestess is the next elf. You may put a green creature from your hand onto the battlefield. And a Karametra is the first non-elf to hit play. Three cards in our opponent's hand and plenty of mana. Well, that's really hurt the Azorius player. Didn't get into a land there and has no chance of playing the Smothering Tithe for the next few turns, seemingly. We draw a Thunderfoot Bayloth, so... Yeah, there's no guarantee we'll get into a land next turn. What I could do is go Guardian Augmenter at the end of the Azorius player's turn and then play the Commander. But I think it's better going for Garrick's Uprising. We can play the God into that and try and help along the chance that we'll draw into a land. Argument to be made for is going for Ronus the Indomitable there, because, worst case scenario, next turn we don't get into a land, we can play this and cantrip with it, and if we do get into a land we can still play our commander next turn, but we'll see what happens. Lizard Blades is the first equipment, comes down as a creature with double strike. Guardian Project is a means of refilling the hand here, only three cards in hand so I'll have to play more creatures. Now we'll Priestess is a means of getting in something for free, Hydra Broodmaster, and can pay the monstrous cost on that if they like. Obviously haven't got down the commander yet. Then it is more mana in the form of Elvish Guidance onto a land. A well-timed board wipe here would really hurt the green player. Fierce Guardianship, you would think they would have the card, I always forget the name of, it's an elemental that draws you cards per green creature you control. Instead it is a Steel Hellkite. Nykthos is in play now as well. There is Nyx Lotus for more devotion to green. Yeah, our opponent's going off here. Revitalize from the life game player. We'll gain three and draw. We'll sigh on a piece. Managed to get into a land, so casting the commander. So, time to see if we manage to get into a land. We do not code Dharma's Reach. I don't really mind playing though, so let's go for that. And nothing to do with our two mana, so we'll pass at that. Okay, Cataclysmic Gearhulk, that'll do it. Each player chooses an artifact, a creature, an enchantment, and a planeswalker from amongst the non-land permanents they control, and they sacrifice the rest. Alright, so the green player keeping his mana, the Nyx Lotus, Elvish Guidance, and the Lanoir Tribe, just one card in hand there. So he's still got a decent amount of devotion to green, still plenty of mana after that board wipe. Played a land and Defiler of Vigor will make the Green spells cost less, so can get the Yeva out at the end of the turn, but no longer has the Guardian Project, so is well and truly in top deck mode. I think I would have kept this, personally, over the Elvish Guidance. Would have had plenty of mana without keeping hold of this thing. And finally, we see that Smothering Tithe come down. Not swinging in at us with the Vigilance Commander, so hopefully the Commander damage won't be relevant at some point. Okay, Smothering Tithe triggering for the first time. We've drawn into Titan of Industry. So I would be tempted to get that down next turn and blow up the Smothering Tithe. Um, especially while the Azorius player is struggling on mana a little bit. It might be that we can get down a land next turn off our commander, so we'll play the Oha Caslam. And that draws us a card, thanks to the Garrick's Uprising. Wouldn't mind seeing a land here, try and keep up the lands being dropped. Smothering Tithe going to get our opponent into a treasure again. That came down at just the right time. Got more card draw in the form of Beast Whisperer, so... Yeah, Titan of Industry as soon as possible, I think. Hedron Archive for the Boros player. And Nettle Seist, two cards in this player's hand. That is going to buff an equipped creature. 
for equipment and or enchantment they control. Probably won't see all that many enchantments over here. The 4-5 might as well swing in over at the life game player. You can take it and only go down to 39. The green player has just drawn into a misty rainforest so paid into the smothering tithe you might as well. Not whether you didn't get down is Yeva. Definitely making use of the treasure tokens here which is fine by me means he's not holding up counter magic. <laughs> There's a prosperity. Each player draws X cards alright. <laughs> We're uh, about to make a lot of treasure tokens here. Alright, so we draw into Black Blade Reforged, Key to the City, a means of making our commander unblockable. Entish Restoration brings them in tapped, I think. Yeah, we can go up two lands, but they come in tapped. Demolition Field is probably worth keeping hold of while we've got Nykthos and Gaia's Cradle to worry about. The Mono Green player's hand has been refilled now. So putting Yeva on the stack has plenty of mana available in order to get more stuff going here. Obviously wants to play around the fact that the treasure tokens will enable potential counter magic. And there is Jorriel, so for 3 tap, discard 2 cards, all lands target player controls become a 3-3 until the end of the turn, so that is going to help protect against board wipes. And then able to tap for a bunch of Nyx Lotus mana here, I think that was 21 mana. Or maybe that was with the Nykthos Shrine to Nyx as well, a lot of mana in the pool anyway. Seems as though he's just using it to pay for Smothering Tithe though. Radiant Fountain came into play to gain 2 life and there are 12 treasure tokens here as well. Will is yet to be activated. Now Will being activated so his stuff will cost less. A Wedding Ring finally on Magic Online with this weird art so see how much that can do. That's the first time I've ever seen it played in a game on Magic Online. I think it's been out for a few years now this hasn't it? Giving a token copy of it over to the Mono Green player because of course you would. Trying to get him to... Leave the life game player alone, I imagine, trying to befriend him. Shabraz the Sky Shark. Whenever you draw a card, put a plus counter on it and gain a life. And offering up the search for Brawling to the Boros player, you never know, there might actually be a Brawling in that deck. Sarah Ascendant is another means of gaining life next turn as well. So it's going to be very difficult to be swinging in with Oha Castle now. I don't think I'm going to spend all my turn going for Titan of Industry, to be honest. I think I'm going to try and encourage this Mono Green player to deal with it and hope that he's actually drawn into something to do so. Okay, so I don't think I'm going to dedicate any resources to Demolition Field this turn either. We're just way too far behind on the board. Um, I think we definitely want Key to the City down. We've got plenty of cards we can discard. So let's get as many basics in play as possible, because hopefully over the next turn or two, we're going to go for Virtue of Strength, and we'll play ourselves a Key to the City. And there's a full grip of seven cards for the Azorius player, so it might be that he can do stuff to us here, but... We just have to play to our outs here, so make our commander unblockable and get rid of the cultivate. We'll try and get Entish Restoration on the go during the next turn cycle. So we'll just go straight through to combat here. I'm hoping we don't have to go for Guardian Augmenter, but Will might force the play, so we'll swing in in that direction. No blocks being made, obviously looks like we're being allowed to hit our opponent. And I think Oha Caslim has been fixed now. It was at first. We couldn't get a creature and a land. But we should be able to here. I'm pretty sure that it's been fixed. <laughs> there is a Voring Clex. I mean, would that be rude not to? Got Beseju as well. Archetype of Endurance is tempting. But I think it has to be Voring Clex. And play Beseju as a land. And we'll draw as a card with the Garrix Uprising. The Smothering Tithe is going to keep our opponent in play until he uses all the treasures because lands are going to start getting frozen thanks to the Voring Clex. Used to think that this was a really obnoxious card and I didn't play it for years, but yeah, whilst well, we're seeing how fast the format's become now, it's turn 6 and there's all kinds of crazy stuff going on, so I have started playing it more now in order to try and keep up with my dear friends on Magic Online. So I've got 8, 10, 12 mana available. A little bit more if we decide to go for a creature in Castle Garenbrig. I think we'd rather take the opportunity to go for the Virtue of Strength here. Not worthy that priority has been held up by the Mono Green player, so he might have a free spell in hand. Um, there's one that can blow up artifacts and enchantments for free. And priority being held here as well, but apparently not wanting to make use of it. So we now get 4 mana out of our basics, which means we've got 9 mana still available this turn. So I'm going to go for the Guardian Augmenter now, 
see if my opponent wants to counter it. Alright, decides to allow us to go for the plus two buff and hexproof onto this. So knowing that the Entis Restoration brings the lands in tapped, I'm not sure I have Harrow in this list. Let's just go for it now, we can trade out the Besaju for it. Getting decent permanence onto the board as well as setting up our mana for the next few turns hopefully. So sacrifice Besaju. And it's traded out for three basics. The enchantment that we have in play cares specifically about basics. So the more of those we've got in play the better. And then three mana floating. Um, yeah, I think we just risk drawing a card. Our opponent's got enough treasure tokens as it is. So go for the Ronas. It makes a good blocker. 5-5 five, five, indestructible with death touch. So that draws us with the Garrick's Uprising, like we said. And next turn, if the board stays intact as it is now, we'll definitely look at Titan of Industry. Shame we didn't get into Sky Shroud Claim before now, because that would have been some free mana for us. And we're actually not going to have to discard too many cards here, which I'm quite happy about. I think we can risk getting rid of Ancient Tomb. And yeah, the basic as well should be fine. We'll get basics out with the claim. An ancient tomb over here as well. Our opponent is going to have to tap lands into the Vorinclex, seemingly. A Helm of the Host, so that could become a copy of the Cataclysmic Gear Hulk, which I imagine is what our opponent's aiming for here. It's not going to deal with the Smothering Tithe, unfortunately, but it will deal with the Vorinclex, which I dare say is what my opponent's worried about. So Helm of the Host onto the Gear Hulk. So we go through to the beginning of combat. Helm of the Host is on the stack and is about to make its token copy. So I'm glad I went for the Entish Restoration now. Didn't feel good to play it during my turn, but whilst the mana was a bit funny, it was better to ramp while we had the chance there. Some stuff happening here with the treasure tokens before they all go down. They'll only get to keep either one treasure token or the wedding ring here. 11 mana. Probably just life gain, you would hope. Alright, the mana being left floating, so he's going to see what the Cataclysmic Gear Hulk gets and then pick everything else off with the mana, I imagine. Uh, so we will choose Enchantment, Artifact, Creature is the Vorinclex, and that's us done. So I was glad of the first board wipe, but obviously not liking the look of this one, but we did force our opponent's hand with the Vorinclex, I suppose. And we will not return our commander back to the command zone because it can come in as a land. We definitely meet the criteria on lands alone. We need 10 permanents in play in order to pay 3 and tap in order to transfer it back. Um, yeah, 3 tap, transform it, activate only if you control 10 or more permanents and only as a sorcery. So we can definitely do that next turn if we want to. And we will not need haste on this because we still control it. So we've controlled it since the beginning of the turn is the point. And it's a secure the wastes. I thought our opponent was targeting a bunch of stuff, but apparently not. So gets in the warriors after the board white, which makes sense. That suggests that there's like soul sisters stuff in the deck as well. And we do get to keep the key to the city, which could come in handy for us next turn. Cataclysmic gear hulk goes at the other green player. Five cards left in the ever player's hand has a decent amount of mana left on the Nyx Lotus and the Lanawar tribe. This is doing some work this game, it's got a nice amount of devotion on it. Encouraging my opponent to tap some lands down though and freeze them. Tribute to the World Tree is more card draw into the Smothering Tithe unfortunately. But you would hope he would hold off on playing out creatures into that so that he can make use of the Yava. Maybe play around more board wipes and play around the fact that Smothering Tithe is still active. We've managed to freeze our opponent's Nykthos as well, which is good. A Bane of Bala Ged. When it attacks, defending player exiles two permanents they control, so it's a type of Annihilator. Drawing a card with tribute to the World Tree. They couldn't have played that at instant speed. I think this is only... Yeah, that's only green creatures. So Smothering Tithe continuing to do stuff. Birds of Paradise gets plus counters instead. Shabraz gains the first point of life at the beginning of the turn. Alright, we are taking a bunch of damage here. Um, potential risk of blocking with the Vorinclex because there's weird white effects that punish blockers. So for the sake of taking an extra damage or um, saving an extra damage, I'll just take it here and try and keep hold of the Vorinclex. So we go all the way down to 26 from that one hit. Might be that our opponent was trying to get rid of the Vorinclex with one of those types of blocking effects in order to be able to tap down his lands during the next turn. <laughs> Alright, a farewell. That's one way of dealing with it, exile everything. 
We made them freeze the lands first though, and now we're making the green player freeze more lands, so this thing has definitely been worth playing I think in order to keep us in it and slow everyone down. And now uh, before he loses the mana getting down Yeva and I dare say some other stuff, three cards left in hand. And all but one of the lands are frozen from our opponents. Good that we don't have to spend resources getting rid of the Smothering Tide now at least. <laughs> there is a Crater Hoof Behemoth. I suppose he might as well play it if he's not going to keep his board intact. Alright, so now we see a Battle Mammoth. Uh, we I mentioned Summoning Sickness previously. This is going to be transformed tapped, I think. I mean, we'll play a land. We might as well just do it now because we definitely want our commander back online. I don't think things become untapped once you transform them. I think they just flip round. Yeah, it does come into play tapped, so downside of these creatures, but it saves us on command attacks at least. So hopefully we'll be able to swing in next turn, especially whilst our opponents can't do anything. Alright, so I think it would be a good idea to set up with the Beast Whisperer here so that we can start cantripping on everything. So we'll make use of the extra mana from the Castle Garenbrig. It's a shame we lost all our double mana and everything, but definitely understandable that our opponents would want rid of everything we had going on here. And then cast into that we might as well go for the Battle Mammoth, which is another means of card draw if our opponents want to go for Swords to Plowshares and the like. So casting a creature spell draws us a card. And make sure that we've got a land for next turn. Now we do have Trample on our commander already, so probably aiming for the two equipment next turn. So that we can cheat more stuff into play. All depends on if our opponents are able to do anything, which I highly doubt. Well, still able to do something. Six cards in hand, that is a Voltaic Key off the back of the Hanware Battlements. The 5-5 five five swings in towards us. I think we'll just take the damage because I think Battle Mammoth is... More useful as a creature in play that can protect against swords and stuff. And the fact that this is tapped down means that we can better swing in over here. Because I think this player is the one to be very worried about. Although all the players have definitely done stuff of relevance. Alright, so managing to untap with our commander in tow. Uh, this player didn't make a land, but we'll untap everything next turn. Has really struggled with mana outside of the smothering tithe. Which obviously has now gone down. Um, let's see here, this is going to be 5 and 5, so 10 mana in total for those. Is our opponent going to block with the Yeva? Does it matter if he does? Do we even need the Black Blade Reforged? Do we just try and save some mana? Because we'll have 7 mana if we just go for the Fire Shrieker. And yeah, it depends on what my opponent does of course, but I would like to Demolition Field onto probably the Nykthos. So... Yeah, let's just go for double strike and see what happens. Although we could get rid of the Azorius player by going for Blackblade Reforge there. Equip onto the Oha Caslam. Not worthy, there could be a one mana removal spell onto our commander. Pongify, there's the Suspend one as well. Rapid Hybridization and the like. Eh, screw it, we'll go for Blackblade Reforged as well. Chances are we're going to get into multiple lands here, so we'll still be able to go for the Demolition Field. So I think I will deal with the green player here. Mm. <laughs> no, I'll deal with this player. Problem is I'll... Actually, I think I'll deal with this player. We can actually get the double strike damage this way. This player's only got two cards in hand. And this one is kind of being saved by the fact that he's already taking commander damage weirdly. Just need to pray that the Boros player doesn't scoop to us here. So we'll try and get both double strike damages through. So 18 points of commander damage, we take them down to zero anyway. Uh, let's see here. Silverback Elder, Nyx Bloom Ancient is the thing there I think. There's a duplicate as well. So it's Nyx Bloom for more mana tripling. And a land. And then our opponent graciously takes it. So it goes down to minus four and 37 points of commander. And let's see here, we've got a Nykthos of our own. I'll definitely take that. Uh, Soul of the Harvest is a means of drawing more cards. Apex Altasaur, not really worried about with this board state. Maybe just a Tender Shoot Dryad actually, so that we can litter the board with tokens and better block. So Pandra would be funny while we've got a massive commander, but I think it's a bit overkill at this point. So Nykthos, uh, we lose a pip on the Tender Shoot Dryad for the Nykthos, but I think that's better, getting more bodies into play. 
So it's a case of seeing if the Azorius player has a board wipe really. Could be a an Ugin or something like this over here as well. Um, so let's generate as much mana as we can here. That is 31 points of mana off the Nykthos. I think we have one floating, so 30 mana. Uh, let's go for Sky Shroud Claim. That will get us a couple of untapped forests. Definitely want to go Demolition Field onto the Nykthos. That will hurt our opponent's mana. And each of us can search for a basic, that's fine. Not really worried about an untapped forest from my opponent, I don't think. And I don't want to play too much into a board wipe, but Titan of Industry is going to be good, I think. We can gain some life and put a shield counter on the commander to try and keep it from being destroyed. Um, oh, it does draw as a card as well, of course, so maybe it is worth getting down the Thunderfoot Bailoth. <laughs> Alright, there's Sylvan Library, that makes a difference. So, Titan of Industry, we want to go for, where are we? Gain 5 life and put a shield counter onto the commander. So we gain 5 and shield counter goes on the commander. We go up to 26. This player has scooped as you can see. Uh, play the Sylvan Library. I want to hold on to the Thunderfoot Bailoth just in case our opponent does manage to wipe the board. Um, yeah, I don't think moving the equipment really matters at this point. So we'll just leave it there I think. Alright, and our opponent decided to say good game, so didn't have a board wipe, played to his out, and um, tried to get into a board wipe there, but couldn't quite make it. See if the client wants to share with us what we were drawing into. It is even more mana, Invernal Bloom, and probably would have just put a couple of lands on top and shuffled them away with the Wooded Foothills. But if our opponent's not going to do anything there, obviously we hit with our commander only once. So let's see how many cards we can look at here. Yep, a lot of creatures to choose from there. Probably would have just gone for the Regal Force because all of these would have gone on the bottom of the library and we could have definitely refilled our hand with something like Regal Force. So, yeah, didn't look like we were going to get anywhere that game, but thanks to multiple board wipes and board control, we were able to just ride it out and make enough mana in the end to actually get some stuff done. So, hopefully you all enjoyed this revisit to Oha Castle before the new set releases. Big thank you to the patrons for their support of the channel. And I will see you all in the next one, I hope. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.